Well, hello, good morning. Uh, we're here at Fort White Alive. I'm Dr. Roland Bohr, presenting some of my research on indigenous archery. Brought a number of different bows and arrows. Um, some of them I have made, some of them my students have made during a field course on indigenous material culture that took place at the Anpo Bison Ranch by Riding Mountain Park uh, a few years back. So we're trying to uh, test different types of bows and different types of arrows. Um, I will explain some of these bows here. Um, this one here is made from ash and this is called a self bow because it's made from one single continuous piece of wood. You can see here that this bow has no growth rings or no um, grain pattern on the outside of the bow. Instead you see triangular or chevron type grain pattern on the inside. So this is where all the wood removal happened to make it thinner and the outside is pretty much where the bark was and we tried to leave this outer growth ring intact without cutting through it so that the fibers can endure the stretching, the tension when the bow is drawn better because if there's a nick on this outer surface that's where the bow might break. So if I draw this you can see the outside is stretched, the inside is compressed. So this bow was made by a student as was this one. They're both from the same tree, the same piece of wood. Same principle, one continuous growth ring on the outside and then gradual taper on the inside so that the bow will bend evenly. This is another version of the same principle. As I said, the first two bows are ash. This bow is a self bow made from a different kind of wood. This is called Osage Orange or Bois d'Arc. Uh, it's part of the mulberry family. This wood grows in places like Texas, Arkansas, uh, the Southern Plains, the Lower Missouri drainage, and was a highly prized bow wood locally, but it was also traded far and wide across the plains, um, because this is a very strong wood, strong in compression and strong in tension. Usually if you have Osage, you don't need any other materials to add to the bow to make it serviceable. So these are all self bows, and the remaining three are sinew back bows. That means it's not only wood, but there's a layer or several layers of animal sinew glued to the outside with hide glue. The reason for that is that the sinew is stronger in tension than wood. So if the piece of wood you have is fairly short or if it has growth undulations, knots and anything, you can paste the sinew over top and it will take care of those problems. It will also make the bow stronger, pulling it into a reflex when it's unstrung, uh, and generally render it safer to use. This bow is also asymmetrical. There's a deliberate asymmetry between the upper arm, which is longer and bends more, uh, then uh, compared to the lower arm, which is shorter and stiffer, doesn't bend as much. What this does is it creates a flat trajectory, so you can aim by line of sight rather than having to compensate for an arc. Um, these kinds of bows were used by indigenous people in central North Dakota, such as the Mandan, the Hadatsa, the Arikara, but also um, not just the agricultural groups of that region that I just mentioned, but also the more mo mobile folks like the Lakota, the Sioux would make bows like this on occasion. Um, I should show you how this bow is strung, um, but we'll, we'll do that later when we demonstrate the quiver as well. So the other two bows are a variation of that first one. This is sinew bat, it's, uh, it's oak. This bow is ash, this one is oak. Uh, it has some snakeskin over 
got the sinew to keep it dry. This one actually warped and the lower arm became more bent. So the upper arm is still longer but it's, it's bending less. So this is something that happened over time and maybe I have to correct that or maybe not. And then lastly another ash bow again back with sinew same principle as the other two this one also has a real sinew string so this bow string is made from sinew as well and I'm not just yet trusting myself to pull this to full draw with the sinew string but yeah. once bitten twice shy as they say so those are the arrows and then uh, the bows and we'll look at the arrows here. Um, 